You know, what um, is, is ironic seeming to me uh, is that people value commitment yeah. in our country, and, and yet somehow commitment when it's same-sex partners throws a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems, it's just very ironic seeming. I'm sure you, <laughs> you, I'm guessing, get very angry at one level about some of the, um, if we want to use the word hypocrisy or, or uh, just a... And certainly the hyperbole. Shift. We get, you know, mm -hmm. when, you, when you're constantly having something that is very, very precious and dear to you held up as something evil or, or mm -hmm. sick or, or twisted, mm -hmm. and it's just like, these people don't know us. Mm -hmm. They have no idea about our lives, mm -hmm. and actually, I don't want them to know about our lives. I don't want them involved in my lives. We just want to live our lives. Mm -hmm. But, you know, also, I am aware that I pastor a church where every one of my folks who are gay and lesbian or bisexual transgendered face this kind of discrimination on a daily basis. All of them are trying to build families. Some of them are raising children. All of them are dealing with these issues. And so we can't just keep it between ourselves. We have to be able to say, okay, this is my face, and this is who you're talking about when you're talking about a queer. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I am a gay man. Mm -hmm. I love another man, and we are building a life together. Mm -hmm. And you no longer can make me a stereotype when you know who I am. That's one reason I wanted to do this show. I think that people are afraid of differences. And perhaps, you know, as viewers watch, we'll say, well, these people aren't different from, from, <laughs> from me in, in um, most ways. Um, do you feel that in terms of Minnesota that we're, we're going to be able to go back to this fairness kind of model and, and uh, have same-sex marriages in the next how many years do you think it'll take? Well, that would be dependent on the political climate, I think, <laughs> part of it. Um, I think that more and more gay and lesbian people are, are coming forward and being the face for people mm -hmm. to see. Being more out there, so yeah. to speak. Mm -hmm. Growing up in, in northern Minnesota, you were you're very closeted until you could get out of there. So unless, you know, so all those people that lived in my little town, you know, would never think I knew a homosexual. Mm -hmm. um, and I think more and more people are coming out and, and, and being recognized. And, and once you know someone who is a gay person and you find out that, you know, gee, they're a decent a person and, and I like them, and, and it changes the whole attitude. And like with my parents, it just took them a while and some experience and realizing that, that we're all just kind of human. Um, do you hope to um, have children sometime as a, as a committed couple? <laughs> we Is that we're a too big old. question? We're too old to have children. <laughs> Actually, he has grandchildren already, so we, <laughs> we won't do. be in this relationship. Yes. Wow. So, so that's not one of the reasons no, to marry. No, not for mm -hmm. us. We will have grand puppies. <laughs> <laughs> they can take a lot of attention and care yes. too, can't they? <laughs> um, in terms of our, our society, um, churches seem to be, well, maybe not that much ahead of, of regular society in general. You know, the, all the struggles with, should we ordain a, a person who's gay or lesbian? Um, where do you think the religious homophobia springs from? Um, and I'll ask you both, but do you want to go first, Paul? <laughs> <The religious background. laughs> well, I think a great deal of it stems from fear. Sexuality in general is very terrifying for us as human beings because it touches us at such a deep level. If you think about it, our spirituality and our sexuality are the things that affect us at our, at our core at who we are. Mm -hmm. And so when you, exp when you deal with an issue that is uh, dynamic and uh, hard to control so in some ways and uh, causes feelings and emotions, people want to somehow suppress that and make sure they keep a real tight lid on it. And when you have gay and lesbian people coming around who ex sexual experience and sexual identity is so different from the majority, and people just assume, well, 
you know, everybody must feel like I do. So I'm, I'm attracted to the person of the opposite sex. So why aren't they? Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. I'm not. And I mean, it wasn't something I decided to do. It's just, I'm not. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of it's based in ignorance. A lot of it's based in fear. And then a lot of it's based in a very legalistic way of modeling society. I mean, we're seeing the exact same thing in fundamentalist Islam that we're seeing in fundamentalist Christianity. And that is that you make people walk a very tight, narrow view of what is right and wrong and good and bad and who is in and out. And if you don't, then the, the consequences are very detrimental. Mm -hmm. And if you follow the religious rights, um, religious arguments, you come up with a very, very horrible outcome. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with Reverend Fred Phelps. He is a pastor from, from Topeka. He uh, runs around to pick its AIDS funerals and uh, mm -hmm. typically goes wherever there's anything about GLBT folks and, and says really hateful things. He carries signs that says God hates fags and all these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And people say, oh, he's very, very horrible. But what he is is the logical outcome of the religious rights argument. If you follow their argument all the way, you'll end up being Fred Phelps. And so a very extreme kind of yeah. result from that kind of thinking. And a very mm -hmm. primitive understanding of people. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you think about how we have evolved on so many issues, men and women, for example. You know, there was a time in this country where, where women were not considered equal citizens with men. And that was greatly that upheld. Long ago. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that was greatly upheld by the church. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it still is in many uh, cases in the church. The thing about interracial marriage, you know, it wasn't that long ago right. that people of different races could not marry in this country. How long ago was it? Do either of you know? 1967 I is know when it was, it was shockingly uh, recent. Exactly. 67. And the amazing yeah. thing is, you read some of the old uh, laws that were being passed in states about interracial marriage. They're using the exact same things that we're using now in terms about of, gay marriage. Of the yeah. About why why there shouldn't be interracial marriage. It was against God's will. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a famous quote from the Virginia legislature about. Mm -hmm the fact that God uh, must have not wanted people to marry interracially, that's why God put them on separate continents. Like, mm -hmm. oh my God, you know, this, mm -hmm. this, so, this is such amazing kinds of mm -hmm. logic that sort was used. Sort of folklore, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I am very surprised I just got the, the cue that we're out of time. Oh my, oh my goodness. So <laughs> it, it went fast. Um, I want to give the audience, want to give you a phone number and a website now, I have to tell you, I got this um, from a brochure about a big conference, and it sounded to me like it was a very big group that supports gay, lesbians, bisexuals, and transgender folks. So check it out. Um, see what you think. Their phone number is 1-800-990-3378, and their website is www.equalityforum.com. And then also, we didn't get the number up, but give us the phone number for All God's Children Church, where you're the pastor. Okay. It's 612. 612-824-2673. 824-6273. 824-6273. 2673. 824-2673. And we are in the phone book. get that? All God's Under Children. All God's, all God's children. children, yeah. <laughs> Three of us trying to get <laughs> one number is uh, dangerous. <laughs> well, thank you both very much for oh, coming on you. and sharing your, your beliefs and your thoughts and, and your dreams. And I, I hope, hope our state moves faster than, than it um, seems sometimes. Thank you. We do too. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being with us. We'll be back again next week. Until then, have a good week. <laughs>